She's looking hot, miss. But she's growing. This is Pony. My ponytail palm. One out of many plants in the house. <laughs> yeah, because over here is Ah, oh, the loveliness. Oh, this lovely. All these lovely things. But we're not here for that. We're not here for plants today. We're here for some nitty. Hey, are you ready? I'm ready. It's been a month since I've made a video about my knit wear. I just got from back from the gym. Since this is a vlog, I'm gonna be right back. And I'm gonna have a whole bunch of stuff probably surrounding me. And we're gonna talk about some knitting. I'm so excited. So just, just hold on one momento. Okay. I'm so excited. I have a lot to talk about. So let's not waste much time and let's get into it. Okay. I know I, I don't even know if I'm gonna get to those books, but I really did want to talk about them. Okay. FOs. I have a lot of FOs. I'm wearing one. This is the ghost whisper <laughs> ghost whisper top by um parkness okay at this time this time i'm gonna write down everything below this video so that you can just click what i talk about so this is the ghost whisper made out of yarn b 44th street yarn hobby lobby your local if not online this yarn has been a pretty much staple in my stash i have a good amount of it this particular skein of yarn is going to be the cumulus blouse which i have made in the past i don't have it anymore but i'm when i first made it i made it out of a cotton blend comfy cotton by lion brand and it was just too stiff <laughs> it was not giving this drape at all which it's supposed to have that because it's actually intended to be a mohair but this is the top ghost whisper and these are my knitted pants um i had to knit this again we make the legs longer because this is 100 percent wool made out of patents classic wool and with wool, friction tends to make it felt, and when it felts, it shrinks. So the bottom of my leg pants were getting high watery, so I had to fix that. I'm getting hot now. Oh man, Alabama. It's spring, but it is like 80 degrees outside. It's hot. It's hot. And I turn on the AC, but I feel like I'm going through menopause, y'all. And I'm only 33. Okay, so the next finished object is this. <laughs> this is the Owl Alley Jacket. The Alley Jacket by... Um, oh, gee. I came prepared, but... I'm not really prepared. By Brandy Harper. It was from this book. I use Lion Brand. I use Lion Brand. I will show you. This is the yarn. I don't have the label, so I don't know the colorway. <laughs> but it is from Lion Brand. And you can find this at your local Michaels, even some Walmarts, lots of different places sell Lion Brand. It's a um, affordable yarn. It's wool and acrylic, mainly acrylic. I will try this on. This is the latest 
thing that I have finished actually is this jacket. <laughs> Isn't it the cutest? So the construction of this jacket, it is supposed to be high in the front. I mean, low, yeah, high in the back, low in the front. And it's like supposed to have this wonderful, bulky, chunky collar. <laughs> That's also a hood. Like, I have my shawl pin here because it is one of those garments that tends to come off of you the more that you move around so i have to have a shawl pin i move around a lot i added the pockets the pack the pockets are not included in the pattern but what i did what i did was when i got to right here after I had finished the pocket I did not bind off the pocket I knit the pocket and the body of my stitches together which was a total of 13 and then I kept knitting and then <laughs> same for the other side I made the pockets two at a time and I did a 13 by 13 for the most part they're not very deep, but I don't need them to be very deep. So we're all good in the hood on that front. It's a cute jacket. I'm, I'm very interested to see how it's going to wear. Um, do you see the construction? Let me talk about that. So as you can see, this is a garter, garter stitch garment but this bit here is brioche so we have brioche here in the hood which is knit in two pieces and then you join it together with kitchener stitch and then and then you pick up from the hood to knit down for the body it's pretty neato did i give away too much information i'm sorry but it came out of this book. Um, I want to say at this moment, she is taking a sabbatical from social media. I want to make this. I don't really wear hats, and but you know, this looks real cozy. Oh, did I show? I showed too much, I think. All right, well. There you go. That is Knitting for Radical Self-Care, a modern guide. Um, I like the patterns. Um, for the, the stuff before the patterns, to each his own. Um, but she does give um, instructions before the patterns, meaning like uh, she gives you the how to's on how to do things. So if you don't know how to knit, if you were to get this book, it could teach you how to knit and then you could make something pretty neato with brioche. Okay, next. <laughs> so something small that I made was not for me, but for my son and my husband made some socks. Um, the pattern that I used was a free pattern off Ravelry um, called Quick um, Chunky Socks. So, if, yeah, they're Quick Chunky Socks. It was free. What um, I did is I used the size. I changed the size needle, but used the same stitch count. So, 20. 40, 40 and 40, but I used uh, the size 
one and a half slash 2.5 millimeter for my son's sock using Peyton's Croy socks. So it's a self-striping yarn. And for my husband, I used the US, I want to say US 6. Let's see. No, a US 4 or a 3.5 millimeter for his sock. I used two skeins of Garnet Heather from Knit Picks. It was in my stash, so stash busting. Yeah. <laughs> and this was a learning lesson on making socks for my son and my and my husband and socks in general I don't know why I thought I could do these one at a time and they still be the same even if I do the stitch markers to count how many rows that I've done it just they just never are the same if I do them one at a time it's just a tad a tad bit longer it's and I can kind of see it when he's wearing them. I don't think he notices it actually, but I can see it. I don't like it. Mm -mm. I don't like it. So yeah, but they're really comfortable and he likes them. So it was a quick knit. It didn't take very long. So those are the socks. The first finished object of this year was a bath mat that I came up with just by doing some gauge math stuff and I came up with 70 stitches on a US 13 using a bulky slash super bulky yarn it gave me a bath mat I've been wanting slash needing this bath mat for a long time <laughs> And I stash bust. I got to use a lot of yarn for this. Yes. <laughs> it's wet right now. I just washed it in the washing machine. Because this is a cotton blend. That's the back. This is the front. Um, To give you perspective, I am about five three <laughs> so your arm length is usually the same as your height so about five um, feet three inches of knitting <laughs> and it mm, it smells good has it got wash I'm gonna lay it down so what I do when I before I lay this down on the floor in the bathroom is I put down that um, grip stuff what is it called it's just a roll of grip um, material that you can lay down so that things aren't slipping and slipping and sliding so that's what I do it's a garter stitch blanket. I mean, not blanket. It's a garter stitch rug. So it was real easy, quick, very useful. I always I recommend making a rug at some point, especially if you have stashed cotton. Uh, this was the last thing I made last year, and this is the. Any day cardigan. I love this color. The Any Day Cardigan by Lily Kate. I am in love with this. So this is a reverse stocking net garment. So the inside is the knit side and this is the purl side. I like it so much. Of course, I'm going to try it on. 
so what I've um, realized when it comes to certain designers, Lily K in particular, I love the way that she does her construction for her shoulders. I wear the gray stoke cardigan a lot. And this thing stays on my person and doesn't come off and I'm not having to do this constantly to keep it up. I wore this without the buttons closed up for the first time the other day when me and my husband went out and it was perfect. It did not come off. I'm going to change these pants. These pants are good for long, <laughs> long shirts, long shirts. <laughs> Quick outfit change. Uh, it was getting hot in my wool pants. And then I was just not feeling the camel toe situation that it was giving me. Um, everybody knows females have vaginas. I don't need to broadcast it, you know. Anyway, um, well, this in particular is the Bella Top. I will link down below. Um, I know it starts with an L and it ends with a creates. <laughs> She's such a sweet person and she makes very um, cute, easy, simple patterns that anybody could make. Um, isn't it cute? I used a, a cotton blend and I've had this top for one summer season so far but anyway we're talking about this cardigan this is the uh any day cardigan by lily k i normally wear it with the buttons my husband and i um went in together on these buttons <laughs> i had to i picked two buttons that i did like for this cardigan and he liked these. So I picked these. And this is what she looks like. Isn't it the cutest? So the yarn that I use for this one um, is a wool. And I would consider this um, rustic or tactile. But it's not itchy to me. It's uh, it feels nice, especially after blocking, wet blocking this. It um, it does change the feeling of it, and it made it softer. There is a lot of peeling on this. It's just the nature of this particular yarn, um, which was shoot. I don't remember the name of the yarn. It's Louette Riverstone, and I use five skeins in the color red, but it totally looks pink. Even in person, it looks pink to me. See, like this is pink versus a red. I know this isn't red, but it's still not giving me red. Anyway, so yeah, that was that one. The next FO. This is the hanging leaves. Hanging, yeah, just hanging leaves by Beth McDonald Stone. And I finished this one oh, uh, January 9th. January 9th. Oh, it's so cute. I made it kind of cropped and I made it kind of balloony. Um, the pattern does not do the cinched in, cinched in shaping at the end like I did. And uh, It was uh, one of those patterns where you decide on the length. You can also make this into a cardigan, which is in the pattern as well. 
but I wanted a pullover. This is the sweater that I had started when I went to um, New York City for my birthday, for our birthday. Me and my best friend have the same birthday. But isn't it so cute? I used Must Be Merino from Hobby Lobby, Yarn B. I used four skeins. And this is in the size US 5 or 3.75 millimeter. And for the body, I used the US 7 or a 4.5 millimeter. And this is also reverse docking it. I've been on a reverse docking it kick, but I wanted lace and now I have it. And I love plants, so this is perfect. So that's another one. On to the next. So the next thing that I finished was not for me, but it was for my husband. Actually, I went on a make things for my husband kick after the hanging leaves sweater. I don't know what came over me. We're going to chalk it up to, to, to Jesus above. <laughs> because as we know, April is a selfish knitter. So for me to let go of my things and knit for somebody else who's very, very particular, that's love. That's, that's love, okay. So this is the first, the club. Actually, this is not the first clubhouse hoodie. Or is it? This one was created December 13th and I finished it January 29th. And it is the size extra small. I didn't tell the sizes of the other ones, but like I said, I'm gonna link them down below. And this is all Ravelry stuff. So if you can't look at Ravelry, whether, where there's a will, there's a way, okay? But this um, baby is a by Alexandra, Alexandra Tavel, or as we know, Two of Wands. It's a raglan made out of Malabrigo. <laughs> Malabrigo Dos Tierras. Six skeins was used in this and I um, will have to make the body longer for him because he found that because this is a more fitted hoodie <laughs> that it tends to ride up his person, therefore showing his belly and midriff isn't his style. So <laughs> I'm going to make it a little bit longer, not anytime soon because it is springtime slash summer here, and this will not be worn till, um, shoot, probably next January. Um, but the things that I did, things that I altered, what did I alter? I did short rows in the back. I did short rows in the back because my husband needed short rows to make the back longer so that's why you see this situation and it does look cute on him <laughs> so cute look at it <laughs> he likes this sweater but this is also his um i'm gonna get into shape sweater because it is so fitted if if you have bloat, it will show. So he is working on that. <laughs> and then I also made him another one, but this one I bought the kit for. I bought the kit from Lion Brand. Off the website. 
Yes. No, so what I did was, what I did was, I went to Ravelry, I saw the pattern, the pattern length kits, and that's how, boom, this happened. Um, we talked about the colors that he wanted for these sweaters before I chose the colors. And he chose this color, and I think it is wonderful. I love this color. As you can see, my hanging leaves is about the same. So when we wear this, and I will show you another thing. Okay, anyway, let me get ahead of myself. Um, this sweater has been well worn. I am so proud of my husband. <laughs> he has worn this a lot. And he, he's even told me that he's gotten compliments at work about this hoodie. Um, so it feels really good. It feels really good that he likes it and other people think that his clothing looks good on him. So this sweater um, hoodie is more is looser on him. And I knit the same size, but um, I used worsted weight so this is this was a worsted weight and this one was a DK same size though so that gives you you know um, an eye into gauge and different yarn fibers um, this worsted weight is an acrylic and a wool blend but mainly acrylic versus this is an alpaca um shoot what is it i'm gonna tell you okay so this is a 50 percent alpaca and 50 percent wool this has a whole lot more drape than this do you see how much this moves compared to this yeah um he did say that this also is great when the wind isn't blowing if the wind is blowing it goes straight through the sweater and i'm pretty sure the same thing's gonna happen with this it's a fairly um loose gauge you see you can see my hands through this so this is a very um thin sweater that I think would be great for fall um, but Mason is a very hot warm warm person so he could probably wear this in the dead of winter and be fine same for this it's not as see-through but you can see that it's it's got a lot of airiness to this fabric so but it's really cute and it looks really good on him I also did um, the pattern. Okay, I don't think the pattern called for uh, faux seam. I don't think so. I don't think it called for a faux seam, but I added a faux seam and I did short rows to make the back longer on this one as well but I did it way after the fact so you can see the difference in the yarn I don't know I, I tried with steam blocking to make it kind of look more seamless but I can see where I did the short rows I also added elastic on the the ribbing on the on the body because uh, before I did the the shaping we noticed that the garment would do one of these instead of stay cinched in so when I ripped it back to add the short rows then I put the elastic in there so it will stay also, one thing that I did admit in the pattern that the pattern did call for was I cord drawstrings in the hood. 
but we admitted that he didn't care for that, which is fine with me. Making an eye cord is not my favorite thing to do, so I was fine with admitting that. Yeah. My next FO that <laughs> yellow. <laughs> this was for my son, and <sighs> I'm sad about this. This yarn was originally the Sophie 2.0. But I decided to rip it back because it was just way too big. And I had made a mistake in the arms and I made the arm, the arms were literally like this, this thick. Like it was very, it's very, very, very large. And so I didn't wear it that much. So I decided to rip it back and I made my son something out of the yarn, which is this hoodie. It's a free pattern. Oh my gosh. Let's just talk about the way I say pattern. I, Adam, you know what, bump you. I cannot help the way that I talk sometimes. Pattern. <laughs> bump you. What was I doing? Let me stay focused. This is called the Garter Ridge Hoodie um, by Erica Flory. It is free. I used, um, size US 7 or 4.5 millimeter and I did the size 4 for him it fits him perfectly only thing that I needed to do was make the arms a little bit longer but what happened was after he wore it one time one time ah! <laughs> I'm so so sad about this. This is a lesson learned. What I think happened is I rushed through and I didn't bind, I didn't um, weave in my ends good enough. And something must have like caught or something and it just started ripping it back. Right from where I cast it, because this is where I picked up for the sleeve. And it is gone. There is a hole. <laughs> so I'm gonna have to. I'm just gonna rip this whole sleeve back. I'm not trying to do surgery because I already had to rip it back a little bit anyway to add more. So this will be a garment for next next season. He will be able to grow into this. Look at these pockets. They're so cute. Um, I added the pockets, the, the pattern did not call for pockets, but I like pockets. So I did, I did the pockets. So how did I do that? When I got to the point that I wanted to get to, I bound off the amount of stitches that I had for the pocket. And then I went across. Then I bound off on the other side. And then on the next row, I attached the pocket by knitting two stitches together to have that. And then at the end, that's when I tack down the sides. So that'd be a pocket. Isn't that neat? I know. Um, one of the also things I modified on this pattern, pattern, pattern. <laughs> This is supposed to be knit in pieces, but I decided to knit in in the round. Um, in order to not have a jog. I used a tip trick from another pattern that I had purchased from Denise Beron. It is the wave of change pullover because it has these garter ridges as well in it so what you do is what is it what is it you knit the pearl you knit the pearl round and then on the next row you'll slip that first stitch You'll slip the first stitch, that purl stitch, 
purlwise with the yarn in the front and then you knit you'll knit your three rounds and then do your pearl roll and then so forth and that so that's how I got rid of the jog but in retrospect next time I think I would just do uh, a faux seam yeah I would do a faux seam like I did for Mason's sweater I would do a faux seam because then it would look uh, the same on either side better but this was just like a little I just wanted a hoodie a quick hoodie for my son that was yellow because he wanted to be a part of the yellow <laughs> family <laughs> so we all have our yellow sweaters so yeah okay i've got two more two more fo's this one was a quick chunky knit by goodnight day trefon it's, it's so cute this is the trefon sweater made with u.s 19 17 and a 15 did i use all of those am i lying nope 13 15 and 19. i used five skeins of line brands will cook quick um quick and thick in the colorway starlight do you see oh You can see the sparkle. It's so cute. So one thing about this sweater is you see how it's like high in the back like that? That's because there's no short row shaping in this. So you would either have to make sure you're wearing it a certain way to to shape it or you put short rows in the garment the top of it is a garter stitch yoke and then it goes into stocking it and then I bound off with a pearl row and because it's so chunky it doesn't roll up but it's so cozy now it's starting to cool off in the house so I could keep this on but I have one more thing to show you and this one is probably my favorite out of all of my FOs. I bought this yarn in New York City for my for my birthday. My 30 and yeah, my 33rd birthday. And um it's just special. The only thing I don't like about this yarn, it is peeling so 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 bad. It's corridor cor or is it let me tell you the deed it's ba rom you winter burn aaron in the colorway brass band i used six skeins which accounted which which accounted to a thousand and a hundred and ten yards I know, I know, I know. Get into it, yeah. Get into it. <laughs> this is the cutest hoodie I own, I have ever made. It is freaking fantastic. So what happens is the family will wear our yellow hoodies together or I've been on a hoodie fanatic just oh my gosh I have to try this I have to I have to I have to um this took me about how long did it take me I casted this on November 22nd the day before my birthday 
and I finished it on February the 4th of this year. Oh, the yarn is considered rustic as well. There's, let me actually pull up the, it's 50% blue face luster and 50% mushroom wool. So it's like straight wool. And it's United Kingdom. It's 100% 100% British wool. Isn't that neato? I, I, I think so. I think so. This is going to be in my hair. <laughs> oh my gosh. I made this size. Oh, this yarn is discontinued, by the way. So, there's that. Um, this is made um, US 10 or 6 millimeter. 6 millimeter. So, it, it knits up fairly quickly, even with the cables. And the cables are also on the back. You see? Ah! I want to say this is called a dolman sleeve, but don't quote me on that. <laughs> um, this is called the Cable Crush Hoodie. I didn't think I said that. Cable Crush Hoodie by Knititude. She did that. I love this. I love the the gradual increase in the body. So I started off doing the size extra small and I went to small. So it's a bottom up sweater. So I cast it on for the extra small here. And then when I got, to, after I got done with the ribbing, then I made my increases that I need to make in order to get to the size small numbers. The way that I do the whole increase evenly across your garment is I go to Google and I put in worldknits.com and you can put in the amount of stitches that you have and then how many stitches that you need to increase to. Ah, where is it? And then press calculate and it'll give you a press calculate. And then it'll give you what you need to do to get to the amount of stitches that you need to evenly. I think I use that all the time when I do things like that. When I start with one size, I need to go to another size. Cable Crush Hoodie. So after 43 minutes, girl, that's all my FOs. I, I had way too many. And that was just up until now. I didn't think I knit that much. Apparently so. So now for my whips, I've got way too many of those too. 14. Or is it 13? I ripped back. I ripped back. I ripped back. I'll show you what I ripped back real quick. I was making the Palazzo Pants by Lorraine and with um, the cotton from We Are Knitters. I bought 10 skeins. I started these shorts. Look at this. I I had made it all the way to separating for the crotch and then doing the legs. But what I came to find out was that it was just too bulky around this bit. I don't know if that had to do with the fact that I went against the pattern and I decided to go ahead and add the elastic into the pants before I started the the body 
I also did a size two. Maybe I should have done a size one. So I do want to make the pants again, but I really need to get my sizing down. In the pattern, <laughs> she gives you options to use worsted weight yarn or DK. Comfy, the cotton is considered Aran. So I... I did do a gauge swatch. I did have to do a, day, a gauge swatch. I don't think I have it. No, I don't. But <laughs> I did do a gauge swatch. And I was on gauge. And like, look, you can't see for real my hand through here. Like, it's really, really, really nice. And I really want these pants. But I've got to get the size down. Because I do not like how they were looking. Where's my phone? I'm going to show you. Yeah, you see that? Mm. It's just the front. Yee! Yeah, I didn't like it. I didn't like that. So... No, I just have to rip it back. Um, we're going to start over and we're going to pick a different size and hope for the best. I really, really want these pants because as you can see, they look kind of cute, but the size, the size just wasn't there. That's on me. All right. So that was a whip that I ripped back. This is the oldest whip that I have, and I really need to work on it, and I have not done anything. And this is the zebra sweater. I talked about it in previous episodes. <laughs> Look at the smiley face. <laughs> I love it. I cannot. Now that I'm looking at it, oh, now I want to work on it. But after I finish this, I got to do taxes. Man, yeah, being an adult sucks. Ugh. Why do I gotta pay taxes? Anyway, that is such a cute sweater. I really, 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 you know what, just to inspire myself, I'm gonna pull out the piece that I have finished, which is the back. The back I've finished. And it is, it is magnificent. I should probably block it. believe I did that that is so awesome this is the back so this is going to be a long sweater I can wear it with like oh my gosh it's going to be a dress Okay, so I'm going to I'm going to buckle down. I'm going to buckle down. We're going to finish this. This is amazing. This is the zebra pullover by Arne and Carlos out of one of their Vogue mag out of the Vogue magazine issue. Um this is Intarsia. And when I started this, I did not know that. This has taught me about some tension. As you can see, right, right, right here, it is so puckery. I'm going to try to pray to God. <laughs> I hope this box out. This is, um, must be merino. So I think it is 100% merino wool. So I know mer merino blocks out like nobody's business. So this is going to be big. I'm going to be drowning in zebra knit. <laughs> it's going to be great. I can't wait. Okay, so I'm glad I, I took this out. Y'all, this has been sitting in the corner for so long. 
It's been sitting in the corner in my my hoagie bag that's got water damage. <laughs> oh, so sad. But sh this is such a nice bag and I have not been able to use it properly because this sweater has been sitting in this bag taking up space. And this is the magazine. Look at that sweater she's wearing. Which is also in this. If y'all don't know, now you know, I low-key really, really, really like knitting from from paper, from books and from magazines. I just think it's cool and, and vintage. <laughs> I'm vintage. Okay. Um, this is awesome. So I'm glad I, I brought this out. I'm, I've got this new inspired feeling. Um, this is also a whip that's been lingering. Uh... Oh, did I mention for this? I am using a US 6 slash 4.0 millimeter needle for this. So, this is where my needle is. See, this is why I need to stop casting on. But this is why I have a whole bunch of needles. I have a lot of needles just for this purpose. On my birthday, on November 23rd, I had casted on about 10 things. I, I went on a crazy cast on birthday party spree. And so I casted on a lot of things <laughs> that I still have on the needles. I need to finish what you're about to see. So one of the things that was in one of my previous episodes was this one. And it's the Tove sweater. Can you see what's happening? And it's sitting in my other hokey bag. I had uh, this filled with a whole bunch of stitch marker, I mean, enamel pins. And guess what happened? They all fell off from one thing or the other. So they're kind of like in here, like like this one. That I got from Fiberspace in Washington, D.C. That one is also from Fiberspace. These are from my one of my favorite Hairline products when I was a loose natural at a beauty. Um, this is when I was a part of a paralegal association <sighs> because it is my other thing. Um, look at this. This Gigi made it. She still hang on, baby. Gigi. Um, this is my husband's enamel. Where eagles dare. Cause he's in the military so yeah these all are special to me i'm just not looking at this for real it's been a while it's been a while since i've picked this one up um this is using a loft um lace weight mohair i have this because right now and i think this is why i stopped because i was like hmm mm. You want me to do what? What? Mm -mm. This <laughs> I was using, this is the main needle that I'm using, which is US 8 slash, ooh, what is it? Five point millimeter. Five point millimeter US 8. So what you have to do now is isn't it cute this is not brioche this is knit one below's and then this is just regular ribbing um twisted rib twisted rib and this is three strands of mohair held together to make this this is the supposed to be like the shoulder yeah, this is the shoulder, and then this is supposed to be like the arm. Which is a new construction for me. Because the way that I'm having to do this shoulder 
is like you're supposed to like make a panel here to attach these together using DPNs. I've never done this before. And since I'm using mohair, I'm like, what am I supposed to do? So this is kind of very tedious. And the way my life is set up, I can only do tedious things when I'm by myself, which is right now. But I also right now have to do taxes. <laughs> so this is my procrastination station doing this vlog. I should probably do more vlogs in between so I don't have so much to go over, but what it is what it is. Look at this web. It's just so cute. You want to see one of my mistakes? If you can you can you find it? I it's this. Oh, yeah. <laughs> All right, this is my when we were going to eat, sleep, knit in Dallas, Georgia with my knit group. And I was the passenger and I wasn't paying attention. And I ended up doing normal knit one, knit one pearl one instead of knit one below. So I have that line. It's my, I went to the knit shop line. <laughs> the, but it's so cute and comfy. I, I really do want to finish this. I'm so close. I'm so close. I need to finish it. So that is the Tove sweater by Gregory Fibers. Oh. This baby here. I talked about this in, in episode six or vlog six. Oh no, I dropped stitches. And she's close to being done too. I just need to get on the roll. But I have so many other things I want to work on. This is the sleeve. <laughs> Look at this mohair cotton dream. It looks like cotton candy. This is by Wanderlust in the color Cosmic Tie-Dye. Like, look at this. So right now what I'm doing is I only have one skein of this mohair. So I am, I had 50 grams total when I started and I'm knitting it down to 25 grams for one sleeve and then the other sleeve I'm going to do 25 grams so that I can use up all of my yarn so I don't have um, this lingering yarn. Look how it's just, it's just so wonderful. I have finished the body. So this is sleeve number one, working the ball down 25 grams. And then I will add it to the body. <laughs> it's so exciting. Wow, wow, I have not looked at this together like this. What? I need to put stoppers on these things. Look at this. So what's gonna happen is once I get the sleeve to where I want it to be, um, I attach it onto this. And then it's going to be like, uh, oh, I can't wait. Look at what's going on here. So just so you guys know, when you do not alternate your skeins, you'll get a pattern that that's kind of like this. That's like this, you know, kind of stripey like this. 
this is used with just one skein so that's what it gives you and then at the body here I decided to alternate skeins and look how it changed the yarn like look how it changed isn't that just a cool like it's amazing how the colors and stuff just change and alter based on how you work the yarn i i just love it i cannot wait till this is done i'm i'm close i'm close i just need to keep going this is also in a hohi bag this is the box tote i need them just these are the two skeins I'm alternating. Doesn't it just look so pretty? It does. And it feels so good. So that's the one fuck. And I mean, well, that's the peasant top. My next echo. I am fairly close. Oop, I'm in the middle of a round. Ooh. I love these little um stitch marker holder stitch holders so what you can do you stick it in there boom your stitches won't come off this is the vertebrae sweater by attic 66 okay so right now i'm working on the back i have split for the sleeves oh it's blowing out <sighs> okay here we go look at this look at look at that you see the it's a little bit of a little lace work pattern going down the middle of the back it's so cute it's gonna be a v-neck sweater long sleeves so all these things I'm not even going to be able to wear until next cool season um, this yarn is from Hobby Lobby and it's their hand dyed collection at Hobby Lobby. I bought three skeins and I alternated skeins. So I did not alternate for the ribbing down here. And then I started alternating for the body up here. But if you can notice, if you notice how it also changes once I start back using just one skein, you see the difference? There's less going on up here than it is down here because I alternated skeins. And then it kind of like just slowly it's like a fade. It's so neat. I've been like low key wanting to like dip into dyeing. So I think that would be fun. That's cool. But this is the vertebrae sweater. She's close. We're going to get there. And she is in living in this bag that I got. I think in Washington DC at Fiberspace. Yes, this was a Fiberspace purchase in Washington DC when I went to go visit my bestie. Yeah, okay. Y'all, this one is super cute too. Oh, I love all my whips. I just wanna finish them all, but there's no time. Okay, I'm already in an hour. Look at this. This is the Miserani tea by Caitlin Hunter. Look at my cute stitch markers. It's got some lace work and some cabling going on and color work. So I got lace, color work, and cables, twisted rib, and a little bit of stocking it 
Um, once I finish the yolk, see this makes me want to start on this as finished on this one on this too because I've gotten to the color work part and it looks so good. What? I love the colors I chose. My parents went to Washington DC and this was for my birthday actually. Um, I think my 32nd or 31st birthday. My parents went to Washington DC and they went to a yarn shop I think for me and they FaceTimed me and took me around the yarn shop and I picked these. <laughs> this yarn is um, Shibu. Shibu, I mean. <laughs> Shibu. <laughs> Shibu. <laughs> and it feels so good. I do believe it is a linen. Let me see. Let me see. I did not write down the yarn that I use, the name of the yarn, um, but I did make, I am making the size two, and this is a US, US four, or 3.5 millimeter. I did not check gauge, but it doesn't matter, it's beautiful. Now. There are some things that you can choose. Um, did I decide? I was not sure if I was going to do the body stock in it or if I was going to do the body like, like hers. Can you tell that it's not stock in it? It's um, it's some type of textured pattern. So I think I'm gonna do that because I think it would look really good with this particular yarn. Oh, I'm excited! Yay! So there's that. Um, my next. I don't have it have that living in anything in particular because I'm not actively working on it. But this one is the da, 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 where the car car Carlia. I'm making it an extra small, and I'm using size 3.5 millimeter, 4.5 millimeter, which is the US seven, US four using my high highs a lot of these projects have been high highs oh oh my gosh some addy but and some wood and some prime i have a lot of needles i use them all okay i haven't gone very far on this it's very see-through i'm i don't know this is the back, um, this is the front. So we have a little short row shaping going on. It's gonna be a mock neck. A little mocky mock. Ooh, it's so pretty, this color though. Can we talk about this color? This color, do I? Oh, here we go. It's my favorite yarn, Malabrigo. Malabrigo Rio Sock in the color. Botticelli Red, Botticelli. But the silly, bunch the silly. I don't know. Um, but it's beautiful, and it's going to be beautiful. So that's another whip, 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 whip. I'm gonna finish it, and it's in my hohi bag. It's a smaller version. Ah, oh, what is this? This is the hobo, 
hobo toe. So it's a small version of this one. So I can put um, enamel pins on there if I want. Isn't it cute? Ooh, do I have anything in here? No, look at me. Good job. I don't need to have anything in there. Okay, this one is also almost done. Living in my box bag by Tannis Cassie. Yeah. What is her name? Yes. Tanny Cassie. I'm using True Boo. True Boo! In this color, this color, and this color. What other colors? Um, khaki. This one is not khaki. Why do I have this double banded? <laughs> um, this is Sienna. And um, sand. I like sand. My son likes sand too, <laughs> literal sand. <laughs> um, so here is Elm Street hoodie, almost there. I need to do another, I need to do a sleeve, another sleeve and a hood and she'll be done. It's so cute. So in the, the pattern does not have this wide of striping going on for the arms, but what I've come to realize is I think I did not buy enough main color yarn, so I'm trying to use up all the contrasting colors instead and hoping for the best. Because if I have to buy more yarn and for this, it's not going to be the same color. Lion Brand does not have the same colors. At all, but even though they say they're the same color, when you put it together, it's not the same color, <laughs> unless you purchase the same dye lot, and then even then, sometimes you're still getting screwed. So you really got to um, pick and choose what you want to do because you may end up with two tone colored garment that you did not intend to have. <laughs> but look at this; it's so cute. True boot is very drapey with this double hem. It's also going to have a double hem for the, the hood and the sleeves. I'm almost done, guys. I'm still going. This baby. Look. So last time I showed this, I was still on this section. I think I had gotten to this section, but now I've got this going on. Can you? It's like a green color. It's very cute. Okay, hold on. There you go. Right now, this is seed stitch, and this is the back. I haven't gotten very far. I know. I know. What's next? The pan honeycomb. Oh, it's not very far either. And I have it on hold. This is one of the sleeves. No, I'm not using this. I have this on hold with one of my straight needles because I needed the needle for this. And this is the painted honeycomb. I'll talk about this later as I keep going on with it, but I'm very excited about it. And it's actually kind of, it's fun to make actually. But 
once again, it requires me to kind of pay attention. And right now, with how life is going, I can't do that. So that's how it is. Okay, this is by Jessie Made, the sheer V-neck sweater, and I'm making it to be fitted. So it shouldn't take me very long to make it. I just, I just gotta keep going. This is Madu Madu's Operandi yarns and i love her yarns i've purchased and made something i made the love note sweater with this well not this particular combination but i did use her mohair and another base it was a silk base it was great but this is a rustic Look at me getting in, getting my angry down. Girl, I am not mad at these yarns. Oh gosh, it's a tangle mess. So this is the combo. Isn't it cute? Isn't it beautiful? Oh, that's where it is. I was looking for this. I so I got a cupcake. I haven't made it very far, but we're going to do this. US 7 for this or 4.5 millimeter. I'm getting it. I have a Camille sweater. Look at that. I have so much stuff. This is the Camille. Is it? Oh, wow. So the way that this is supposed to wear is it wraps around. I don't. Ooh, ooh, ooh. Okay, let me guide. Let me, let me, let, 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 let. let me show y'all. One of the things that I love to use whenever I want to try on something. Very, 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 very handy. So it comes with different size string. I'm going to use a long one. I'm going to use this long one just in case. And then what you do is you take the tip of your needle. And this has worked with wooden needles, um, high, high sharps, prime. Okay. So it's you don't want to pull it too, too tight off. And then what you do is you slide it. Slide the stitches in. Slide, slide. Ooh, this will be good because I have not done this for this garment in a minute. So I do want to see how this is how this is looking because this is one of those patterns that does not give you clear instructions so i'm kind of winging this and making up my own thing trying to get to the numbers that i need to get to before i need to connect this um so connect around and then I'll knit a little bit. It's, oh, wow. It's coming together. 
<gasps> oh. And to finish it off, um, it will be an I cord. And it's actually supposed to be worn like this. And then it'll, it'll wrap around. Oh my gosh. What? And then the back will be out. What? Okay, so now that I am trying this on, I'm wondering, I'm thinking I've probably split. That's my cracking up. Did y'all hear that? I probably split for the sleeves too early. There's something not right, but I think you'll be okay. <laughs> I, don't, I don't know, but yeah, this is how it's supposed to go. Okay, I see it, I see it. I'm just hoping that this won't come off of my Shoulders. I don't think it will. We'll see. If I have to like make something to like keep it up, I will. But so far it looks really cute. And it's supposed to be a cropped fit. Oh, I talked about this in episode six. Vlog six. So that's where I've gotten. Oh my goodness. Okay. I think I'm. All right. I got two more things and then I'll be done. I, I'm not even going to get to the looks. Girl, I did not know. I did too much. This is the bison sweater. I know. Look at this. It is so cute. It is a little bear. It's like a bear. This is going to be fantastic and cozy. Another thing I'm not gonna be able to wear right away. Um, but this is Croy Peyton sock up here that I knit double. And then down here is some acrylic, you know, something. I don't, I don't know. What do I have left? Oh, here we go. This is what I used. This is what I'm using. Yarn B. Fireside. 180 yards. I think I bought five skeins or four. And this is another garment that I'm kind of winging it because I didn't do gauge and after I started and based on mm, the length and how many stitches I'm supposed to have at the length that she said to have, my gauge is clearly much bigger. So I'm winging it, we're winging it, but it's going to look cute. I'm going to finish this. <laughs> and last, oh shoot, that's a spider. Ooh, chat. Ooh, spider. Almost out. I don't do bugs. Okay. <laughs> I killed it. Last but not least. See, that was Satan. <laughs> I need to go. All right. This is the product that I have been working on the most at the moment because it is so freaking freaking fantastic it is wonderful this is a knit girl summer dress i'm using um, cascades 
noble noble cotton that I bought from my local yarn shop. Oh my gosh. Yes. Those are little metal details on the eye cords. This is so cute. This, when I put these on, I just instantly became even more excited about this dress. It just looks so professional. It's going to be a maxi dress with a slit. The color is great. I'm, I'm in love. I'm in love. I'm in love. I uh, did a story of me trying this on on my Instagram because I could put this back on here and try this on. Why not? Look at this. That's so cute. <gasps> oh my gosh. It just, and I have on a knitted bralette underneath here. Oh wow. It goes. So what I have to do, which I haven't done yet, is to put elastic in this section. I haven't tacked it down completely yet. I did do a gauge swatch for this. Do y'all want to see it? I do believe this is going to bloom a little bit just a little bit look at this i don't remember what size needle i use for this gauge swatch though useless look at this other tiny gauge swatch this is my gauge swatch and y'all this is that gauge swatch. <laughs> that was for that hoodie the cable crush hoodie so i am it looks like it could be a shirt, like a peplum top, which that would be cute. I don't have any, I don't have a peplum. And I think it would be very flattering. I like it. I really like this. So this is a Knit Girl Summer Dress. It's going to be maxi. It's my last whip. I'm going to finish it. Um, these are the, the metal shoelace. Uh, the jigamajigs that I use I bought it off Amazon since I have them I'm going to use them to add onto here Ooh. what color should I use for this white top metal I'm a sucker for gold Hmm. Let's see. Anyway, you guys, it's been an hour and twenty eight minutes. If you if you watch this, props to you. But regardless, this is my 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 crafting diary and journal. So I'm glad that I have this as a record. <laughs> Things that I did not really show um, was um, this because. I wanted to fix it and I did fix it in my I finished 57 things I showed this top and it had a hole in the the sleeve I fixed it what sleeve is it it was it was this sleeve it was right here there was a hole and I fixed it can you can you believe it? I got there was a hole right here and I fixed it and you can't really tell. And there's my evidence. Like 
I just wanted to put that up there because props to me for fixing it and it looks decent. Um, this I didn't fix, but I added length to the sleeves because they're too short. Because once again, this is 100% wool. And now it fits perfectly. So guys, don't be afraid to go back and fix your knits, even if it has been a year or two. Um, but I still have the yarn for this um, leftover, so I added links in my sleeves. But that's it, y'all. I Oh, this is the bag, another Hohe bag that the dress is living in. I take this one to work all the time. I love this little bag. It's perfect. So, as you can tell, I love Hohe bags. I have more. Anyway, you guys, that's it. Have a great rest of your day. Bye.